I should probably explain what the hell that is. That was an albino African clawed frog. Some frogs like the Titicaca frog look like they went through three rounds of liposuction because they live in high altitude lakes and the extra skin helps them absorb more oxygen. Unfortunately, that's not the case here. This frog is sick and it probably has dropsy. Dropsy is a condition where the fluid that fills the lymphatic system doesn't drain properly so it fills up the lymph nodes and builds up outside the cells which is why the frog looks like a balloon. I'm not 100% sure what caused it but it can be triggered by a poor diet. It's not a death sentence though and frogs with dropsy can live for 5-8 to eight years but yeah, the frog is sick. Okay, so I just looked it up and apparently it's caused by a bacterial infection which means it can be treated by antibiotics as long as the damage to the frog's organs aren't long term. Also from what I read, putting the frog in distilled water can help because high calcium content water it can also be a trigger. There's also a chance that the frog is simply just bloated but it's more likely that he has dropsy. Because I know for a fact there's going to be that one comment, no you can't pop them with a pen and yes you're a psychopath for even thinking that. He's still cute though. So I learned something today and I desperately need y'all to see this. I was today years old when I found out CNM and E can actually move. Yes, the same thing Nemo lived in and the same thing Spongebob accidentally watched while trying to find a sports channel. I know I'm gonna get that one comment, so I'm just gonna say it. Sea anemone aren't plants, they're animals, and they're actually related to jellyfish. They're predators that feed on plankton, shrimp, and even small fish. They hunt by acting innocent and lulling their victim into a false sense of security before they snatch their soul and never let go. Basically, get out with more water. Most anemone have stinging tentacles that can clap fish, and some like the Doflenia over here can cause severe pain in humans for months. The reason this one didn't cause a family reunion in the afterlife is because clownfish are covered in mucus that protects them from the sting. Also, clownfish poop provides nutrients for the anemone, so he basically lets them rock. But like, I knew all that, but I didn't know they could move. You can find this video on YouTube, or if you're Spongebob, on C-Hub. Ben said, popcorn, behold the opsy. What a savage. I should probably explain what the hell that was. That was an Atlantic sea hare, but down south you'll hear it be called a Florida inkfish. And what is a sea hare, you ask? It's basically a large kind of sea slug, and as a mollusk, they're related to octopus and cuttlefish, and like them, they can squirt ink whenever they get pressed. Because of its diet of red algae, its ink is actually purple, but luckily it's non-toxic. This specific one is an Aplysia physiata, also known as a sooty sea hare. It's the most common kind you'll find in the sunshine state. Even though its ink is non-toxic, they basically sweat poison, which is why eating one can make you sick. But some people will eat their eggs as a delicacy, because of course it's Florida, they have no rules. By far the weirdest thing about them is their sex life. They form literal trains because as hermaphrodites, they can uh, pitch and catch. In this forbidden conga line, the sea hare will bust its baby batter into the one in front of him while simultaneously taking it from the one behind. And now you know this sea hare was either going to or coming from an unspeakable choo-choo party. Aren't you glad you follow me? Why do rhinos have two horns? One that's bigger and one that's smaller- I'm so glad you asked. First of all, not all rhinos have two horns, the Indian and Javan rhino have one. The black, white, and Sumatran rhinos have two. Before I answer your question, let me explain why this horn is so important. Rhinos use their horns to dig in the ground for water, females use them to gently guide their babies, and males use them to move their poop in the piles to mark their territory. By far the most important part is that rhinos use those 20 to 50 inch weapons to square up with lions and hyenas and males use them to fight over females in territory. A rhino loses its horn, it loses its biggest intimidation factor against predators and especially against other rhinos who see hornless rhinos as weaker. So to answer your question, if they lose or damage the first horn, the second horn is basically a backup as the first one grows back. It takes three years for a rhino horn to grow back completely and three years without your only defense in the savanna is basically a death sentence. Think about it, when you're surrounded by nothing but ops, you wouldn't have just one strap. I'm talking about guns by the way. Long story short, rhinos in dangerous environments have two horns because evolution was not kind to the ones with one. The more you know, I can't make you like rats a little more, you can go ahead and unfollow me. Rats are ticklish and they actually giggle when you do it, it's just that it's so high pitched that you would normally never hear it. Bison rats blush when they're happy and you can tell when their ears become a more vivid pink. Rats are extremely clean and they spend a lot of time grooming and washing themselves. Not only that, but they bond by cleaning each other, which is called allo grooming, and for a rat, the ultimate sign of trust is letting someone else do their hair. Rats are also neat freaks that'll occasionally organize their food into piles. Pet mice can form strong emotional attachments with humans. Not only will rats react with excitement when they hear their owner's voice, they'll try to groom their human friend as if they were a rat in their own family. And these bonds can easily last a rat's entire life. They're not only highly intelligent, but they can show empathy and compassion. In an experiment, one rat was held in a special cell-like device and one was put outside of it. And every time, the rat on the outside got extremely nervous and tried to free the other rat even though he himself had nothing to gain by doing so. They got racially profiled because it turns out they're actually not responsible for the plague that clapped 200 million people. Scientists believe people caught the plague from other people, not rats. Rats sing like songbirds when they're really happy. Hope this helps. Seagull facts, but they're actually the spawn of Satan. Seagulls will gouge baby seals and eat their eyes, and with a baby seal blind, they attack their weak points because seagulls have zero shame. They'll eat literally anything, including rats, rabbits, and this felony Tweety will even pick on sick lamb. They're bullies that'll assault other birds in the air and steal food from them. They'll dive bomb and attack other birds until they drop whatever food they're carrying. 
Sometimes they'll harass birds that have already eaten and force them to vomit just so this feathery bastard can eat it. There are also cannibals that'll swallow baby chicks whole with zero hesitation or remorse because seagulls are one of the few birds with a negative rights purity score. Did I mention they'll go after your dog too? British seagulls have been known to snatch, kidnap, and murk small dogs like chihuahuas. A seagull will really try to eat your dog and they won't apologize for it. On top of that, this flying buffalo bill isn't shying about eating the bodies of the dead, including the corpses of its own children. And would you believe they started running fades with people too, and once again, it's the British seagulls that are the worst. One seagull tried to snatch food from a little boy's hands and instead almost took some of his fingers off. The largest seagulls have a wingspan of nearly six feet, making them bigger than my mental health was prepared for. These Lucifer canaries don't fear God because they are the feathery antichrist. So you know that joke where everything in Australia with a pulse is specially designed to make sure you don't have one? It's not a joke. Oh, well, there's a plant that can make you suicidal. Dendronide moroids, aka the gimpy plant, is covered in stinging hairs that when touched, penetrate the skin and release a powerful neurotoxin. And that toxin is a ticket to all nine circles of hell because the pain is described as being burned by scalding hot acid while being electrocuted. One poor bastard used his plant as toilet paper and the anal assault that followed was so unbearable he shot himself. Bernie Ryder got slapped in the face with this plant in 1963 and until 1965 all he knew was pain. A World War II soldier fell face first into this suicide pack of a plant and had to be strapped to a hospital bed to keep him from canceling his own subscription to life. Once those hairs got on you, you would develop painful wells that would be highly sensitive to touch, changes in temperature, and water. Which means if you tried to take a shower afterwards, you would be in unbelievable agony. And you want to know why I respect and fear Australians? The same plant that can hand you 13 reasons at once is the same plant they eat, just as long as the stinging hairs are removed. And it's not just humans that are victims. A horse allegedly ate this plant and then proceeded to hand a baker itself, proving that Australia is Lucifer sandbox. Okay, so I got a lot of questions like this, so here's the best way I can explain this. The short version is poisonous means you die if you bite it, venomous means you're a pack if it bites you. Poison is a toxin that gets into the body through swallowing, inhaling, or absorption. Remember that Family Guy scene? So if you use toad, then I'm telling you, you can kiss your life goodbye. That was a dated reference, but because some desert toads contain bufotoxins, you can become a chalk outline just by licking them. This frog is considered the most poisonous thing on the planet because its toxins block nerve impulses causing the muscles responsible for your breathing to stop, making you do the mannequin challenge permanently. Venom involves a bite or a sting that puts you on a stretcher. The most venomous thing on the planet is the box jellyfish because those stinging cells inject a neurotoxin that can cause cardiac arrest before you even leave the water and make it onto shore. What makes them venomous is the fact that they inject it into your body. But because nature's one big middle finger, some animals like this scaly bastard can be venomous and poisonous. The Asian tiger snake not only has a venom injecting bite, but its diet of poisonous frogs means its skin is more toxic than the shade room comments. And if you still can't tell the difference, just remember this. Poison in the mouth, it's about to go south. Venom, if it bites, your coffin sealed tight. You can go flax, but it slowly gets more. I definitely just said flax. I don't care, I'm not re-recording. This picture looks like a torn ACL, but those are actually the flamingo's ankles. Their knees are so high up, they're usually covered by feathers. They're born gray, but turn pink because of the carotene and the brine shrimp they eat. The same thing can happen to you if you eat enough carrots because the carotene will turn you orange. Also, there are black flamingos. African flamingos stand in water so toxic it would strip the skin off your legs in two minutes. Also, they can drink boiling hot water. This isn't a flamingo trying to collect life insurance on his wife, it's two flamingos feeding their chick with pink crop milk. Other than penguins and pigeons, they're the only birds that can produce crop milk. Don't be fooled though, they can be some trash parents because sometimes they'll abandon their chick for no reason other than vibes. In 2019, when an African dam dried, these pink tweeties left 2,000 chicks to die. Luckily, the flamingo chicks were rescued by people, but the parents didn't just say fuck <laughs> kids, they said fuck <laughs> nursery. Don't think they're loyal either. Flamingos actually have a divorce rate of 99%, so if a pair do mate for life, it's because they didn't have any better options. Greater flamingo can roll in squads of thousands. Because they have no real way to defend themselves, so their best defense against a predator is hoping your neighbor gets clapped instead of them. Animals that I am 90% sure only exist in this realm as Pokemon. Glaucus Atlanticus. Even its name sounds like a Pokeball wielding battle cry. It's actually a sea slug whose bright blue colors help it camouflage in the ocean. Doflenia Armada. Can you imagine squaring up with a guy and he says that name followed by I choose you? You'd be respectfully down terrible just off the name. It's a striped sea anemone with a painful stain that takes months to recover from. The main wolf, and I'm not gonna lie, he's probably very low tier. He's not even a wolf or a fox, he's just his own thing. Half of his diet is vegetable batter, so you already know he has no bag. He might have mane in his name, but nobody's choosing him. The Golden Brush Tail Possum. He's a Tasmanian marsupial that hides in trees, but if he also sneezed electricity, I would not be shocked. I mean, technically I would be, but I wouldn't be surprised. The Baird's Taper. A 700 pound flaccid faced powerhouse of a Pokemon that could bite your arm clean off. Definitely one of the most disrespectful Pokemon you can collect. And if you like collecting Pokemon, you'll like this dragon collecting game. It's a game where you can- that was such a terrible transition. Look, look, download it if you want, if not, that's cool, but um... Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go, that was embarrassing. Manatee facts nobody ever told you, but I am here to spread the good word. Not only do manatees have hands, they have fingernails too. They evolved from a four-legged land animal that looks like an unethical liaison between a hippo and a deformed pig, thank god this version got patched. 
They might have the weirdest family tree in the world because they're related to aardvarks, elephants, and the rock hyrax. They're physically incapable of being aggressive because their teeth are great at grinding grass but useless for biting. They couldn't hurt you if they wanted to. If an alligator and a manatee bump into each other, the 12-foot carnivore gives the manatee the right of way. The only bad thing is manatees expect the same treatment from boats and it ends really badly. Literally, the only natural predator they have are humans on boats, which is why they're a protected species in Florida. Watching a manatee can make you $500 poor and cost you 60 days of freedom. At 11 feet 1,000 pounds, the African manatee is one of the biggest vegans on the planet. When I was six, I had a stuffed manatee named Manny, and one of the biggest unsolved mysteries in my life is whatever happened to Manny. Columbus thought manatees were mermaids, and I cannot guarantee you he didn't try to have sex with them. It basically fought to stay afloat. After 50 years, they were taken off the endangered species list in 2017. They currently write jokes for Family Guy.